All right, well, I'm still working with these um, crystalline cells and uh, trying to figure out uh, how they work and such. And um, I've been studying the electrodes and how John Bodini has been telling us about the, um, the way the electrodes can act like semiconductors and allow the crystal to do its thing somehow, and we're not sure exactly how, but leave the electrodes intact and not, in other words, not eat them up. And it's the magnesium that takes the hit. It just goes away like in any galvanic battery, but not in these crystal cells. And there's a way to enhance that by forming oxides on these electrodes before you make them. And uh, this little guy here, uh, I'm named him Humpty Dumpty of all things. And, uh, it's a crystalline cell that has no separator in the middle. It's just crystals. And inside it looks like that. And what it is, is a, a piece of magnesium that's have an oxide formed on it before the cell was made. Then a piece of flattened out copper wire that was heated up to form the oxide on the copper wire. And then these chemicals that I've had luck with, uh, the borax, the alum, and the salt substitute, which are these IB pointless cells that I've been making on the stove, which my last video showed how to do. But uh, what I did on this project here was I formed the uh, oxide on the magnesium using a solution of Epsom salt in water with the 12 volt attached to a piece of copper wire in the magnesium strip and uh, formed an oxide on this piece of magnesium. Let's see if you can see it if I tip it just right here. You should be able to see that oxide layer. It's about halfway through that electrode there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, there is an oxide layer on that part right in here that forms a barrier and uh, Jim has been working a lot with that and John Bedini of course has too and what it evidently does is it blocks the ion transfer between the metals and keeps the metals from being eaten up and the real action takes place in the crystal and that's what I did here was I made a um, crystalline cell with uh, the crystals in the middle and then I clamped it with a clothespin, like this one here. And it runs these oscillators. And it runs them really good. Let me turn this up a bit. You'll see this come on brighter. And uh, the reason I named this thing Humpty Dumpty was I wanted to take it apart after a day and see what the uh, magnesium looked like. And I checked it with a magnifying glass to look for erosion and pitting on the magnesium. And it wasn't. And so I thought, well, you know, it's not pitted, so I'll just carefully put it back together again and uh, see what happens. And I dropped it. I dropped it on the ground. And parts of the crystal fell off. And as I was looking at that thing, I thought of the nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty. And all the king's men and all the king's horses couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But I did. I put it back together and wrapped it up and started running this oscillator again. And that was several days ago. So I built another one today. And uh, that's how it starts out with a clothespin, clamping it together. Then you wrap it up with that. But the real interesting thing about this is it's coated with WD-40. And that's driving the moisture and the oxygen and everything away from that crystalline cell and I believe helping to keep the oxidation from happening. But uh, what I'm going to do is take this off here and put Humpty Dumpty, <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, that little guy right there, back on this. I'll show you what, what happens here. And remember, this is about four days. I started this uh, about three or four days ago. And there's Humpty Dumpty. running that oscillator and there's no separator in the middle like I say it's just these two elements right here 
with the crystal in the middle clamped. And the way I did this was I took the magnesium and I dipped it in this weird solution here. And then I laid it in the crystals and then carefully, carefully clamped the two together with that clothespin. Then I dried it off with a hair dryer and sprayed the entire thing with WD-40. And that's what makes that cell. And like I say, it's, uh, it's not stopping. And uh, that's why I'm doing this video. Is I don't know if anybody else wants to try this or not. But these oxide layers on these two electrodes, I believe, are doing exactly what John Bedini has told us about. It's forming a PN junction. It's forming a semiconductor junction, like check valves on each side. And so the electron flow is doing its thing and not attacking these. And I know there's a lot of controversy um, about this, and there's going to be a lot of people, the chemists and such, and say, oh, no, 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 that's not what's happening. But you know what? I don't know what's happening. I'm not a chemist. But what I do know is when I see something work, I'm going to pursue it. And that's these three chemicals that IB Pointless came up with. Those two dissimilar metals put together in such a way that I get results. And I've made a whole bunch of these IB Pointless stovetop cells, and they're still working. And my little friend over here, penny number one, she's still working after two months. And her voltage is about what it was two months ago when I started her up, back in August. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, my uh, little uh, show for today. And uh, anybody wants to try this um, or have comments, uh, just leave a comment. And um, like I say, I don't know what's going on here, but I do know when something works. And that thing works. That's a little Humpty Dumpty. Thanks for watching.